Are you tired of feeling like time is slipping through your fingers? Do you find yourself constantly overwhelmed by tasks, yet never truly accomplishing what matters most? If so, you're not alone. In today's fast-paced world, it's all too easy to fall into the trap of wasting precious time on activities that yield little to no value. But what if I told you that you have the power to reclaim control over your time and create a life filled with purpose and fulfillment? What if I showed you that by making a few simple changes, you could break free from the cycle of busyness and start living each day with intention and clarity? Today we embark on a journey to explore the art of time mastery. The art of stopping wasting your time and instead using it wisely to create the life you desire. From procrastination to distractions, we'll uncover the common pitfalls that rob us of our most valuable resource and learn how to overcome them. So, if you're ready to take back control of your time and unlock your full potential, join me as we discover the secrets to stopping wasting your time and start living with purpose, passion, and productivity. Everyone wants to be successful. And you achieve success by solving problems for other people. The bigger the problem or the more often you solve it for more people, the more successful you'll be, you'll make more money, you'll be given more, you'll be happier, and so on. But you also succeed by solving problems for yourself. So, when faced with a setback or adversity, what you do is ask yourself, what can I do now? What is my next step? How can I solve this? What can I do more or less of? What should I start doing or stop doing? And the idea of simply giving up never occurs to you, that's off the table. The only thing being considered is how to deal with this, and you become intensely solution-oriented. I have taught complete half-day and full-day courses on how to learn problem-solving and decision-making. I have written books and audio programs about it, because what we do in life from beginning to end is solve problems. If you look at your business card, you could take off any title it has and simply write Problem Solver, because your whole life from dawn till dusk, you'll be solving problems. Small problems like running out of toothpaste at home, and big problems like a client canceling an order, among others. You spend your time solving problems and making decisions. The better you become at this, to the point where it becomes an automatic response, people will start coming to you and saying, look, I've got this problem, and you seem to solve problems as well, what can we do? So you ask questions. What exactly is the problem? How did it happen? When did it happen? Where did it happen? Who does it affect? What are the different solutions we can consider? And so on. I teach this all the time so that people, instead of reacting to a problem with anger or disappointment, respond constructively. They say, wait a minute, whatever it is, I can solve it. I just have to find a way to fix it. And soon it becomes automatic. They inhale, exhale, solve the problem, and it never occurs to them that they can't do it. It's just a matter of time. Many solutions don't work. Sometimes you'll have solutions that don't work at all, that are very costly or even fatal, and there's not much you can do about those things. But in general, most things can be resolved. I come from a poor background. My parents never had money. They were hard workers. My father was a carpenter, and my mother was a nurse. I left school without graduating and worked in manual jobs for several years. Then I got into sales when I couldn't find a manual job anymore, like most people in sales nowadays. And then I started asking myself a question that changed my life. And the question is, why are some people more successful than others? Why does this happen? I looked around and saw people who were 23 or 24 years younger than me, who were doing better than me, and they weren't smarter than me. Some of them were even less intelligent. One of the things I say is that nothing will infuriate you more than seeing someone who is less intelligent than you doing better. You wonder, how can this idiot be doing so well? And I started asking this question in sales. I began to ask myself, why are some salespeople more successful than others? And I did something that very few people do. I later found out that I went to the top salespeople and asked them why they were so successful, and they told me what they were doing. I did it and sold more. So people asked, how come you're making so many sales? So I told them, and they did it, and their sales went up. When I got into the business world, I asked managers, how do you run a business like this? How do you organize it? And they told me, and I did it. Therefore, one of the greatest principles of success you'll find is learning from the experts, learning from people who are already demonstrating their results you want to achieve. Read their books, listen to their programs, attend their courses, learn from them, and always they will tell you 
You can save yourself years of hard work just by learning from people who have already learned it themselves. My favorite word in life is clarity. The clearer you are about what you're trying to achieve, the faster you'll reach it. In fact, people with clear goals and plans and written ones with priorities achieve 10 times more in life than those without them. It's very simple. It's the 10 times factor. Make sure everyone working with you has crystal clear clarity about what their job is. Be clear about your top three most important tasks and help everyone else to have clarity about their top three most important tasks. This way, everyone will always be working on the three most important things they can do and hire other people who can perform the task at a lower cost than your top people to free them up from small tasks so they can do the things that contribute most to your overall goals. That's the leader's task. Decide on your goals and your most important goal and then each day start your day with a list. The best time to make a list is the night before because when you make a list the night before for the next morning all kinds of ideas for the list occur to you. It's like goals for the day. Then you look at your list and say, if I could only do one thing on this list, what activity, what task would I want to make sure I completed before leaving town? For a month, that becomes your most important task of the day. Now the concept of eating the frog comes from a story where they say that if the first thing you do in the morning is to eat a live frog, you'll have the satisfaction of going through the day knowing that probably the worst thing that could happen to you is eating a live frog. And the two corollaries of this principle are, if you have to eat two frogs, eat the ugliest one first. Now the frog is your biggest task. It's the one you're most likely to procrastinate on. It's also the one that will have the biggest positive impact on your career if you do it now. So if you have two really important tasks, do the most important one first. We say do the worst first, do the biggest first. And the second corollary is that if you have to eat a frog anyway, it's not worth sitting and looking at it for too long. So what you do is you start with that task. When I've given this talk in corporations, they often come out and make bronze frogs for all their executives. The bronze frog is placed on the executive's desk. And when they get to work, the first thing they see is the frog. Or they place it on top of the plant, the first thing they see is the frog. And it reminds them to start and do the worst first the task that has the biggest ramifications first. Then you discipline yourself to work focused on that task, no matter what happens. If you get distracted, you return to the task, like a gyroscope returning to center. You stay on that task because you've decided that everything else is a relative waste of time compared to this task. It doesn't mean it's a waste of time, but in relation to this task, everything else is secondary or worse. If you can do that and develop the habit of doing it, You'll double your productivity on the first day, and it will keep increasing for the rest of your career. You'll be so productive, you'll get more responsibilities, more opportunities. But here's the wonderful thing. Everyone wants to feel like winners. So how do you get the feeling of winning? Simple answer, you win. Well, how do you win? Well, you cross the finish line first. Now, fortunately, in life, what successful people do, and I learned this after many years, is so important. They set goals for themselves that they can't cross. So if you complete a task of some value, it's like winning a little, and you feel like a winner. You start, you work, you complete the task. Even if all you do is wash your car and clean the interior, you step back. You feel happy because when, gee, your brain releases endorphins, and endorphins are called nature's happy drug, and they make you feel happy, your self-esteem goes up, your self-confidence increases, and you feel happier and friendlier. You're actually a more charming person, believe it or not. When you set up a task and complete it, you feel like a winner, your endorphins go up, your self-esteem improves, and your self-confidence increases. Now, if you have a to-do list and choose to do your most important task and complete it, you experience an emotion called endorphin rush. Your brain releases endorphins that flood your system and make you feel euphoric. You almost laugh out loud. You're happy. Your heart rate goes up. You're smiling. Sometimes you stay and work late into the night to complete a task and you do it at 2 or 3 in the morning even though you should be exhausted. You're happy. You can't sleep. You walk around, watch TV because you feel great. So what winners do is recreate this feeling over and over until it becomes a habit. They recreate this feeling over and over until it becomes a positive addiction. Now positive addiction is a very interesting topic. You can develop a negative addiction to an illegal drug or you can develop a positive addiction to endorphins. Positive addictions are fueled by setting and completing important tasks. Tasks that play a significant role in your life. 
Some say you don't lose your spontaneity if you're always working on the main tasks. You're not happy all the time, and you're respected and appreciated by the people around you. You feel proud and have a positive self-image. People appreciate you and you earn more money. What's there to complain about? So, it's something very simple and that's why the book transforms people's lives. It takes you from just being to being successful. Make a list, identify your most important task, start with that, and stick with it until it's done. But world-class people have a much bigger vision of what's possible for them. One of the techniques I learned many years ago from an expert is called from X to 10X, which means imagining you could go from X, your current income, to 10 times X, 10 times your current income. And your first response to that is that it's completely absurd. There's no way I could increase my income 10 times. It's not possible. Then I'll ask the audience, is there any chance you could increase your income 10 times over your lifetime? Because there might be a chance of one and everybody will say, well, maybe one chance in 1,000. Then I'll say, how many people here since you took your first job until now have already doubled their income? All hands go up, tripled it, most hands, quadrupled it, many hands. I'll say, so you've already doubled and tripled your income. All you need to do now is to do the same thing you did to double and triple your income. And you'll double and triple it again. And then you'll have to increase your income 10 times. And there are people all over the world who earn 10 times more than you. And they're no better or smarter than you. And what this does is expand your thinking because most of us start to develop narrow thinking around our current income and then adjust our lives, adjust our appetites, the restaurants we go to, the food we eat, the house we live in, the clothes we wear, the car we drive. We force our entire world to fit our current income, while successful people create a vision. Here's an interesting point. Peter Drucker said that if you don't have a vision of being a world leader when you start your business at your kitchen table, you probably won't ever be very successful. So if you're starting your business at a kitchen table, imagine you could be a world leader and then ask the question, if I were the world leader in my field, how would I be different from today? How would my company be different from today? We were talking about Steve Jobs and Apple Computer. Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak started in a garage with the idea of putting together parts and making a little Apple computer that people could have at home. Bill Gates of Microsoft started with the idea that if they could make it usable, you could have a PC on every desktop. Now, as we reflect on the visionary insights of leaders like Steve Jobs, we're reminded of the transformative power of taking that first bold step towards our aspirations. Jobs' audacious vision of a personal computer in every home revolutionized the way we live and work, despite initial skepticism from industry giants. Indeed, Jobs' relentless pursuit of innovation serves as a poignant reminder that greatness lies just beyond the confines of our comfort zones. As Brian Tracy aptly puts it, the first step is often the most daunting. It's the leap of faith that propels us out of familiar territory and into uncharted waters. Yet, it's precisely this willingness to embrace discomfort that paves the way for exponential growth and boundless possibilities. Like a chick breaking free from its shell, each step forward builds momentum, fueling our confidence, creativity, and resilience. So, as we embark on our own journey of personal and professional development, let us heed the wisdom of visionaries like Jobs and Tracy. Let us embrace the discomfort of the unknown, take that pivotal first step towards our dreams, knowing that it is the catalyst for unleashing our full potential and reshaping our reality. And this is what sets successful people apart. They have a great idea of what is possible, and then they take the first step. When I started studying self-made millionaires in my 30s, because I realized that I had always wanted to be a millionaire but had never studied them. 8% of self-made millionaires when asked how they became millionaires with all the competition said hard work. Hard work is the most important thing. They said that it's not a miracle that they weren't smarter, that they didn't get good grades, that they didn't come from a wealthy family, but that they were going to work harder than anyone else. And that was their basic personality. Anyway, work harder than anyone else. And I've never found an exception to that all over the world. In every language and culture, successful people work harder than the average person and very hard. The average successful person works six days a week, 59 hours at the beginning of their career, sometimes seven days a week and 80 hours. But the average is 59 hours, six days a week. I was listening to an interview with a very successful Hollywood entrepreneur, and the interviewer asked him, what do you do on weekends or in your spare time? And he said after a pause, I don't know any successful person who works less than six days a week. 
Everyone works on weekends, that's what successful people do. There are also long nights, and unfortunately, many people were never told that if they want to be successful because everyone wants to be successful and no one is better or smarter than them, they have exactly the same skills. Just like you can drive a car, you can succeed, you can become rich. These wealthy people are people who simply worked harder than the average person and worked harder for a long time. All negativity in your life, all failures and frustrations, all negative emotions come from your lack of acceptance of responsibility. If you look at our political problems, our welfare and our problems around the world today, you will find that at the heart of it are people who will not accept responsibility, blame someone or something else for their problems. And if you do that, you must first realize that it is not true. You are responsible for your own life. No one points a gun at your head and forces you to do or not do something. Accept responsibility. Don't blame other people. I teach my audience in my two-day seminar to repeat. I am responsible. I am responsible. I am responsible. Yeah, and to have absolutely no resentment, blame, anger towards anyone or anything else. Because all it does is consume you. It devours you. So you will find that many people only think about other people who have hurt them or done them wrong and need to be punished and so on. And you've already heard me talk about how never to think about other people in negative terms because it hurts you. It's like hitting yourself in the face with your own fist. As we draw this journey to a close, let us reflect on the profound insights we've uncovered and the transformative changes we've embraced. From the moment we set out, we confronted the pervasive habit of wasting time head on determined to reclaim our most precious resource. Now, armed with newfound knowledge and empowered by actionable strategies, we stand on the threshold of a new beginning, a life where each moment is cherished and every action is purposeful. No longer will we allow the sands of time to slip through our fingers. Instead, we commit to seizing each day with intention and gratitude. But our journey does not end here. It is merely the beginning of a lifelong practice. A commitment to prioritizing what truly matters and living each day to the fullest. So as we bid farewell to old habits and welcome the dawn of a new era, let us carry with us the unwavering determination to stop wasting our time and start embracing the boundless opportunities that await. Thank you for joining me on this transformative journey. May your days be filled with purpose, productivity, and profound moments of joy as you continue to make the most of your time and create a life that truly reflects your deepest desires. Our goal setting has seven steps. You can use these seven steps for the rest of your life. Step number one is decide exactly what you want. Most people don't do that. Only the top 10% of people are absolutely clear about what they really, really want. What do you want financially? What do you want for your health? What do you want for your family? Be very clear. Be specific. Remember, your subconscious and your superconscious mind can only work to help you achieve a goal when the goal is clear. Step number two is write it down. Only 3% of adults have written goals and everyone else works for them. Write it down. This is called a psychoneuromotor activity where you actually write the goal down physically on paper and it activates all your mental powers. It programs it into your hard drive and then your subconscious works on it 24 hours a day until it's achieved. Once you write it down. Step number three is set a deadline. Set a very clear specific target to aim at. This acts like a forcing system for your subconscious and your superconscious and your superconscious minds. And what it does is it motivates and drives you forward to achieve that goal. So, set a deadline. If it's a big enough goal, set sub-deadlines and break it down into parts and then keep thinking about the deadline. Step number four is make a list. Make a list of everything that you could think of that you could think of that you could do to achieve that goal. And keep writing until the list is complete. If you think of something new, write it on the list. There's something wonderful about breaking things down onto a list. Henry Ford once said the biggest goal in the world can be achieved if you just break it down into enough small steps. Some people ask the question, how do you eat an elephant? And the answer, of course, is one bite at a time, but you've got to divide it into bites. 
Step number five is to organize the list. How do you organize the list? You organize it two ways. First by sequence, what is the order in which you have to do things? And second of all, by priority, what is more important, what is less important? What is less important? And remember the 80-20 rule. The first 20 of things you do in the achievement of a goal usually account for 80s of the results that you get. Now uh, you have a goal broken down by sequence and priority and you have a plan. A person with a goal and a plan can accomplish extraordinary things, sometimes beyond their imagination. Yeah. Step number six is to take action. Do something. Move quickly. Do something immediately to achieve your goal. And step number seven, and this is the great one, do something every day. Do something every day that moves you towards your most important goal, whatever it happens to be. So here's the exercise, and this is what's going to make it all come to life for you. What you do is you make a list of 10 goals that you would like to achieve in the next year or so. Write them down on a piece of paper. This may take you about three to five minutes, but it could change your life. Then you look over your list of goals and you say, if I could only achieve one goal on this list, which one goal would have the greatest positive impact on your life? Now, whatever that goal is, put a circle around it. This becomes your major definite purpose. This becomes your focal point. This becomes your point of concentration. Now you can work on the other goals on the side, but this becomes the goal. And you do something all the time on this goal. You write it on a clean sheet of paper. You set a deadline. You make a list of everything you could do to achieve the goal. You organize the list by sequence and priority. You do something immediately, and then you do something immediately, and then you do something every day. When you wake up in the morning, you think about the goal. And all day long, you think about the goal. Yeah. And I can promise you this, if you follow the seven part process, plus the 10 goal list, plus the selection of one key goal, your life will change in the most profound ways. You will start to make progress that's completely beyond your current imagination. Write out your goals. All goals have to be in writing, by the way. If you don't have your goals in writing, then they're not ready goals at all. They're merely wishes. And as they wish is merely a goal without any energy behind it. Have your goals in writing. Write them out very specifically and clearly. And then do this every single morning. Rewrite your major goals in the first person, singular as though they already existed. Rewrite your major goals every single morning. Now, this should take you about two to four minutes, maybe five. And you can do it all in a paragraph. For instance, if your goal is to earn $50,000 a year every single morning, right? I earn $50,000 a year. If your goal is to be excellent in real estate, say, I am an excellent salesperson in my field. If your goal is to weigh a certain number of pounds, if your goal is to enjoy a certain kind of life, write down your major goals in the first person singular as though they already existed today, every single morning. And then every single evening, Take about five to ten minutes instead of watching television. Just before you turn on the television, say, wait a second, I've got to review my progress. Uh, sit down and review what you've done in the course of the day and say, what have I done right today? What have I done right? That's moved me toward my goals. The second question is, what would I do differently if I had today to do over again? Those four steps, by the way, Include rewriting your goal each morning, reviewing them in the evening, and asking yourself those two questions. What did I do right? What did I do that moved me toward my goals today? And what would I do differently if I had the day to live over? If you'll ask yourself those two questions in the next 30 days, you'll accomplish more than you accomplished in the last six months. This is the most incredible method I've ever seen. I learned it some years ago. Just rewrite your goals every morning because every time you write your goals down, you're programming them into your subconscious mind. When you program them into your subconscious mind, you set up a field of vibration within your brain and this law of attraction, based on this field of vibration, attracts into your life people and circumstances that harmonize with your dominant thoughts. Everybody here has had the experience of starting to read about a subject, think about a subject, become interested in a subject, and suddenly you started to attract into your life books, magazines, articles, conversations, people, opportunities to expand on that subject. If you've had that experience before, 
What you do is you create a force field which we cannot explain scientifically, but it is a field of vibration that goes out from you. It tracks back into your life everything that you need to realize your dominant goals. And everybody's had the experience of writing down their goals at the beginning of the year and opening up the envelope at the end of the year and finding that 80 of the goals have been accomplished. Have you ever had that experience? Absolutely remarkable, isn't it? The only problem with goals is that we don't set enough of them and we don't set them highly enough. You can have anything you want. Imagine you could have anything that you want. Anything that you can hold in your mind on a continuing basis. You can have anything that you are crystal clear about wanting and are willing to pay the price to get. You can have. So clarity is the key. Be clear about what you want. Be clear about what you have to do to get it. Be clear about your vision. Be clear about your vision. Be clear. Speak. Walk. Talk. And act the last thing before you sleep. The first thing in the morning. Think about. And. Visualize your goals as reality. See your goal as though it already existed. Your subconscious mind is only activated by affirmations and pictures that are received in the present tense. So see your goal vividly just before you go to sleep. See yourself performing at your best. See the situations that you're facing working out exactly the way you want them to. Especially see yourself living the kind of life that you want to live. See yourself in the kind of relationships, the kind of health, the kind of car, the kind of home you really want. Hmm. Visualize just before you fall asleep at night. And the first thing you do when you get up in the morning is to feed yourself mental picture. These are the two times of the day when your subconscious mind is most receptive to new programming. Just before you fall asleep and just when you wake up. Well, the law of cause and effect is very simple. What is the cause? It's your belief. Your absolute clarity about the goal that you want. What is the effect? It's the goal coming into your life. The law of beliefs is what you believe in. You believe that you must ultimately achieve this goal unswervingly. And that belief creates your reality because you begin to see the whole world different. The law of expectation. You confidently expect that everything that happens is part of a plan to help bring you towards your goal. The law of attraction. What do you attract? You attract people, ideas, and circumstances into your life, help you achieve your most important goal. The law of subconscious. The law of correspondence. Your outer world corresponds to your inner world of goal setting. The law of subconscious activity. You continually program your subconscious mind with a clear picture of your goal, and your subconscious mind arranges all your words and actions so that they fit a pattern consistent with achieving that goal. And the law of habit is that you think about your goal repeatedly over and over again until it becomes a habit to wake up in the morning and think all day about your goal. So all you need to do to raise your self-confidence, your self-esteem, and your level of attainment high is to have an absolutely crystal clear goal and work on it every single day. Now here are two things that you can do all day long to keep your mind and emotions focused on your goals and financial success. First, listen to audio programs in your car when you drive around. Continue feeding your mind with a steady stream of high quality educational, motivational material that moves you towards your goal. Sometimes one idea you hear on an audio program can change your life. Two, imagine no limitations. When you look at life, the starting point of setting goals is for you to throw off all your mental limitations and let your mind roam freely across the entire universe of possibilities. Your primary job at the beginning is to allow yourself to dream big dreams and then determine exactly what it is that you want out of life in every area and in every dimension. Decide what's right before you decide what's possible. Imagine that you could be or have or do virtually anything that you really want to as long as you know exactly what it is first. Make up a dream list. Temporarily imagine that you have no limitations of time, money, knowledge, contacts, experience or education. Imagine that anything you can write down is possible for you. Remember, anything that you can clearly define and crystallize on paper is possibly possible if you want it long enough and hard enough. And if you're willing to make whatever efforts and sacrifices are necessary. There are no unrealistic goals. As we say, 
only unrealistic timeline. The very act of writing your goals down sets the whole universe to work in your favor and activates all the mental laws to help you. In fact, many people have had the experience of writing out a list of goals on New Year's Day, putting the list away and not referring to it again till the end of the year, and then finding at the end of the year that 80% of the goals have been achieved, sometimes in the most amazing ways. The very act of writing big challenging goals causes three things to happen. First, your self-concept improves and your self-confidence goes up immediately just by writing down some big goals. The act of setting goals requires self-confidence and simultaneously builds self-confidence. Having the courage to write down what you really want improves your self-image and raises your self-esteem. The action itself generates a feeling of greater personal power and ability. Second, when you write down goals, you tap into your mental and emotional powers. Goal setting actually gives you a burst of physical and mental energy. Your heart rate and your respiratory rate speed up. The very act of goal setting is inherently exciting. Sometimes we say we're feeling listless. Make a list. It's true. It's like stepping on the accelerator of your own mental and physical potential. And if you do this every day, write your goals down over and over. The results can be amazing. Finally, commit your goals to paper. The very fact that you have committed a goal to paper dramatically increases the likelihood that you will achieve that goal. Your mind is structured in such a way that you cannot write down a goal clearly on paper without simultaneously having the ability to somehow attain it. The most important question is always how badly do you want it? And here's an interesting discovery. There's a miracle that takes place between the head and the hand. It's when you write something down, psychoneuro, motor activity. It actually helps you to understand it with greater clarity. It stimulates creativity, enables you to see it. The fact is that becoming a goal setter, so you're right, setting and working on goals all the time increases your likelihood of success by 10 times. Fact is, the very act of setting goals, writing them down dramatically increases the likelihood of you achieving them. It gives you tremendous clarity, and it also activates a whole series of other powers that you don't know about. Your ability to set goals and to make plans for their accomplishment is the master skill of success. This ability, developed through practice, will do more to assure your eventual success than anything else you ever learn. The 1090 rule says that the first 10% of time that you spend planning and organizing will often account for 90% of the value of the entire process. So here's a powerful but simple method for setting and achieving goals that I've learned over the years. First, decide exactly what you want. Clarity is the starting point of great success. And second, write it down in detail and set a deadlines. If set some deadlines if necessary. Hired, determine the additional knowledge, skills, and abilities you will need to achieve your goal and how you're going to acquire them. Fourth, determine the obstacles and difficulties that you will have to overcome to achieve your goal and organize them in the order of size and importance. The fifth key to goal setting is to determine the people and groups and organizations whose help you will require and decide what you will have to do for them to earn their assistance. And sixth, Make a detailed plan, broken down by activity, organized by priority and sequence. What is most important? What must be done first? What must be done before something else is done? And seventh, perhaps the most important, is to take action on your plan immediately. Do something every day to move you toward your most important goal. Get going and keep going and keep going. At each stage of your life, Whenever you're confronted with the need to make new choices, to set new goals, sit down and think through them using these seven steps. Always think on paper and always be willing to revise your plans when you get new information. Keep working on your plans until they're complete and then execute them boldly. Psychologists recently have concluded when I started teaching 25 years ago that as you feel yourself moving towards something that is important to you, your self-esteem and self-confidence go up. You feel happy. You feel powerful. You feel strong. You feel a surge of energy and elation.
You're more creative. All of your best qualities emerge. How do you blot out all the negatives in your life? You think about your goal. Whenever, say, you think of something that makes you unhappy or negative, you swing your thoughts, often like a searchlight. And you think about your goal and you talk about your goal and you work on your goal and you work on your goal because your mind can only hold one thought at a time. And if you're totally determined to achieve a single goal and you think about it and work on it every day, eventually all the other things will fall away. I have everything you want on the peak. Everything. Use your wildest imagination. And think it you can eat. Why don't you eat it every morning? Rex, you one year from See how much. That ain't no theory I That's all success. That was a lot of years to Is that real? That's it's a very, very important piece. To success. It's a principle of success. Every wealthy person knows. If you do not have it written down, your chances of it happening is reduced drastic because it's a principle of success. You have to have everything you want written. I don't know nobody wealthy don't have any stuff written on a piece of paper. I don't know nobody. Each success is what is called future orientation. That means top people, top 10% of people, think about the future most of the time. They think about the future most of the time, and they practice a concept used by top people called idealization. They imagine they have no limitations, and they imagine you can wave a magic wand and make your future perfect in every way. If I teach a, a program, coaching and mentoring program to business owners, and I tell them that if you come and work with me for one year, I will show you how to double your income and double your time off within 12 months. Everybody does. It's very simple. I hand them out a spiral notebook, a little notebook. And I say, what I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to write, ask you to write down 10 goals that you'd like to accomplish in the next 12 months. Write them in the present tense, as though they are already a reality. Not I will earn, but I earn. Now, when you write it down, you engage in what is called a cycle neural motor activity. By doing the handwriting, you actually program it into the hard drive of your subconscious mind. And I've had people do this exercise once, and a year later, they found that list of goals, and they were astonished to find that eight of the ten goals have been achieved. Now, here's the key. Do not refer to the previous day. What you do is you turn it over, and you rewrite your goals again today. Here's what will happen. When you first write down 10 goals, they will be the first things that occur to you. The next day, when you write them down without reference, you will change the order. You may actually drop off one or add something else. The wording will change in the goals, which is very important because your subconscious mind is activated by precision of the words that you use. And so you'll find yourself writing their goals differently in different order and sequence. And at a certain point, you'll find yourself every morning writing the same 10 goals. And then, one by one, they start to be achieved, replaced by inner goal. You know, and people say, yeah, but what if it doesn't work? Yeah, no, no, that's the wrong question. What if it does work? All it costs. I remember, then, two minutes a day, maybe five minutes. But if it could transform your life, as it has done for millions of other people, with no exception, be in 56 countries where I've spoken. So if it works for everybody, everywhere in the world, You'll probably work for that. All it takes is five minutes a day. And it's really a test of how much you really want those goals. Is do you have the discipline to rewrite them every day? If you will do that, front will always entire success process. You know, the very act of writing goals raises your self-esteem. It improves your self-image. It increases your self-confidence. And it activates your creative mind. You start to see all kinds of ideas and ways to achieve the goals that you've written. It's so powerful. It's literally life-changing. And one check that I have never written a call that I didn't cheat.
that I've gone from literally from rags to riches, from being broke to being worth an enormous amount of money. And it was exactly where I woke out. It all comes true eventually. What? you got to have a vision board. It's what I'm telling you works. This ain't no magic trick. Now here's the exercise on what you do. Write everything you want from God on a piece of paper. Be as detailed as you can. Write it down. The object for you is to write down 300 things. Because I know 300 things that you could use. When you get to number 75, you're going to get stuck. Because your mind isn't conditioned to think way out there. So you're going to try to stay in your little list. But I want you to just open up your imagination. If you're going to have anything you want it, put it on a piece of paper. It ain't for you. How many cars? What kind of car? You know, what you want your next house to be? Put everything you want on a piece of paper. Do not stop until you have 300 things. It's going to take you a while. I'm telling you, when you get to 75, you, your brain going to lock up. But keep writing it down. Every morning, read your list. Take five minutes and read your list every night, every morning. One year from today. One, wait, one year from today. And take a pen out. And go down on your list and check off anything that has happened for you that's on that list. If you do that in faith, if you read your list with the expectation that God is going to do some great things for you, at the end of one year, you'll be stunned, absolutely stunned at how much stuff comes off that list. At minimum, 10% of your list to come true. You know how I know? Because I know a lot of people that have done it. But most people can't sustain that level of discipline to manifest the things that they want in, in their life. All of my computers have my vision board on it. Every iPad, tablet I got, laptop, when I pull it, I have my vision board on it. Because that's the signal I'm sending to God that I believe this is what you're going to do for me. You be said, I take stuff, I got to get a new vision board now, because there's a lot of stuff off that vision board that I put on there a year ago or two years ago. That thing came true. Write the vision and make it plain. You do them two things, starting today. Write your own list, read it every morning, every night, and one year, check it out. You'll be stunned. Watch and see what God do. God keep all his promises. If you do not have. Like, don't tell me you wish your life was better, because you're lying to me and you're lying to yourself. Four major obstacles. They, fear rejection of criticism. There's the key to goal setting. Don't tell anybody. Set goals. The only people you discuss your goals with are the people like who also have goals, who will encourage you, your goals, and will tell you that your goals are attainable. Tell you that you can do it. Encourage you to believe it. But the second reason that people don't set goals is people don't know how. People think, well, you just write down what you want it. Now that's helpful, but it's not enough. The third reason, C, is that, um, People don't realize the importance of it. You've been brought up in a family where goals were not constantly emphasized. You still say with people, don't talk about and work on goals all the time. You can actually drift along, not even where goals are central. Success in what? D is fear of failure. We very carefully protect ourselves from these feelings of low self-esteem. And how do we do that? Sabotage ourselves unconsciously by not setting goals for ourselves. Some you don't set goals for yourself. You neither. So, the ability to set goals and to make plans for their accomplishment. Again, master skill. If you master all other skills, this, your life will be that degree. Your life will be dramatic. Now, desire. And this is where we start. Desire is the only real limit. The only question you ever have to ask is how badly. Watch it. You want it badly enough. What I success is hungry. Rather you start to desire. A, it must be. You can't say, I want someone to love me. You cannot set a goal for another person. You want to be in a perfect relationship. But what you do is you describe your relationship. Down you make a list of the person. As though you were going to hire someone to run your company. You make a list of the perfect person and you describe them in. Height, weight, size, and background, check, time, pleasure time, activity, everything. I have given this exercise to countless single. They've been astonished at how fast they move. The very active 
crystallizing it by writing it down by sighting which yeah, and writing it down back to the force field of attraction it starts to draw that same with this relationship and V, they must be burning intense passionate exactly or working on your major definite purpose there's a measure you know what it is come very as a physical need of having this patient always structuring your times so you are sneaking them out but only that if you want to get up and get going the next stage number two belief if you have a belief that you don't deserve success or if you have a belief am i smart enough am i good enough do i deserve success you're going to have opposing goals and opposing beliefs so let's say if your goal is to make a hundred thousand dollars but your belief is that you only deserve to make fifty thousand you're going to be out of sync or out of vibration and they'll basically cancel each other out or you'll do a little bit of hard work and then you'll sabotage your success or you'll think you can achieve it for a day or two so belief is absolutely important you absolutely believe it you walk talks feel behave get results your belief if you feel confident you act confident but if you don't feel confident act confident and it will cause you then number three write it down you pull them out of the air where they have no substance at all and you write them down on paper and when you write a goal down you engage in what is called a cycle neural motor activity you activate your visual powers your audio powers and your kinesthetic powers and whatever you might get only three percent of americans have written goals and you know something everybody works for them the fourth key is and determine all the reasons why you want the goal Uh, if you want to be successful because you're a tenor, what if there are a hundred or three hundred things you want to do your success you will be like a force of now the fifth key is analyze your starting position you can't go from broke to we will get a bigger amount what? remember the reality principle what's the reality get on the scales and you weigh yourself and you honestly admit this is where i am do you want to be fit you go down and you yes number six set in deadline aeneas nin once said that your subconscious can work against you because when you set a big goal you're disrupting your subconscious so your subconscious mind will attempt to sabotage you tells your eye you can't leave this goal guarantee from down it's okay as long as you know what it is if your goal is big enough, set sub deadline. You may set a 10 or 20 year goal and then break it down year by year. So, a person says, Well, one of you set a goal and, and you don't achieve your goal by the deadline. It's just a guesstimate that enables you to focus. We cannot live without a deadline. If for some reason you don't achieve your goal by the deadline, then we set a new deadline. Number seven is identify the obstacles you will have to overcome. With regard to obstacles, there's always something that is a goal. If there are no obstacles, it is not a goal, it will be an activity. Now, there's a very powerful principle called the principle of constraints. And what it says is that there's always one limiting factor or constraint or bottleneck between you and your goal that sets the speed which you achieve your goal. Now, the 80-20 rule applies Average people always blame their problems on external circumstances. Not people look inside themselves. The things that are holding you back are usually the lack of a skill, the lack of a quality, like of discipline, or the lack of a particular knowledge or skill. Only 20% of the reasons you are not achieving your goals are on the outside. So always start. Number eight is to identify the additional knowledge and skills that you'll need. Goals. To achieve a goal that you've never achieved before, you will have to develop skills that you never had before. And here's the great breakthrough thought that changed my life at the age of 23, is that all business skills are learnable. Ask yourself, what one skill, if I was absolutely excellent at it, helped me the most to achieve my goal?
What one skill would have the greatest positive impact in your life? What one skill would help you the most to achieve your most important goals? Say, woohoo, if I was good at that, I saved myself years of hard work. People say, Jesus, it'd take me a week, a month, a year, two years to learn that skill. Life has always been hard. Life will always be hard. Only no hopers and thumb suckers with no future expect things to accomplish great things. You have to work hard. Number nine. Make a list of everything you'll have to do and then organize it of all by sequence. Once you have a list, organize by sequence and priority. Once you have the goal, Times this pull it up thousand percent. Number ten, realize the most powerful faculty that is the ability to imagine your goal has already created. See your goal as a reality every day. Your job is to give to the universe an absolute crystal clear picture the goal that you want. Only get Number 11 is back your goals and plans. Persistent determination. 95% of the goals that you have for yourself in life will attain as long as you, as long as you become unstoppable. Primary reason why people don't attain their goals is first of all, they don't have them, and second of all, they you are persistent the measure of your belief in yourself. So every time you persist, your belief intensifies. When your belief intensifies, your desire intensifies. Your desire intensifies, your motivation intensifies, which makes you even more and more driven, persist in the attainment of your goals. Every act of persistence strengthens you and increases your ability to persist even more. Everything you do builds habits of success. Walk in deeper and deeper and ultimately guarantee your Remember, there are no real limits on what you can accomplish except for the limits that you place on yourself. There's a direct relationship between the level of clarity you have about who you are and what you want and virtually everything you accomplish in life. Average people just throw themselves in life like a dog chasing a passing car and wonder why they never seem to catch anything or keep anything worthwhile. For your desire to be intense enough, your goals must be purely personal. They must be goals that you choose for yourself, rather than goals that someone else wants for you, or that you want to achieve to please someone in your life. In goal set, a process to be effective, you must be perfectly selfish about what it is that you really, really want for yourself. It simply means, in setting goals for your life, start with yourself and work forward. One of the most important questions in goal setting is this. What do I really want to do with my life? When you begin, these will often feel a bit like fantasy, detached from reality. However, now your job is to make them concrete, like designing a dream house on paper. You start with your general goals, and then move to more specific goals. Many people make the mistake of overcomplicating goals and problems. But, the more complicated the solution, the less likely it is to ever be implemented, and the longer the time it will take to get any result. Your aim should be to simplify the solution and go directly to the goal as quickly as possible. For example, many people tell me they would like to double their income. If they are in sales, I ask them, what is the fastest and most direct way to double your income? After they've come up with a series of suggestions, I give them what I consider to be the best answer. Double the amount of time that you spend face-to-face -face with qualified prospects. If you don't upgrade your skills or change anything else about what you are doing, why? You double the number of minutes that you spend face-to-face -face with prospects each day. You will probably double your sales and double your income. According to studies that go back as far as 1928, the average salesperson today spends 90 minutes each day face-to-face -face with prospects. They organize their days efficiently to assure that they spend more minutes in the presence of people who can and will buy their products or services. 20% of what you do accounts for 80% of the value of all the things you do. 
In my advanced coaching program, we teach our clients to identify those 20% of activities that contribute the very most value and then do twice as many of them. Some of our clients double their productivity and subsequently their income in as little as 30 days with the approach. Even if they've been working for many years in the same position, always look for the simplest and most direct way to get from where you are to where you want to go. Look for the solution that has the fewest number of steps. And most of all, take action. Get going, get busy, develop a sense of urgency. The best ideas in the world are of no value until they are implemented. In determining your true goal, use the magic wand technique. Imagine that you have a magic wand that you can wave over a particular area of your life. When you wave this magic wand, your wishes come true. The magic wand technique is fun on the one hand, and quite revealing on the other. Whenever you imagine that you have a magic wand, your true goals in that area emerge. Here's another goal setting question that reflects your true values. If you learn today that you only had six months left to live, how would you spend your last months on earth? Who would you spend the time with? Where would you go? What would you strive to complete? What would you do more of, less of? When you ask yourself this question, what comes to the top of your mind will be a reflection of your true values. Your answer would almost always include the most important people in your life. Very few people in this situation would say, well, I'd like to get back to the office and return a few phone calls. Is setting your true goal is an extension of imagining that you have no limitations. Make up a green list if you had no limitations at all. Mark Victor Hansen, co-author of Chicken Soup Tone, recommends that you sit down with a pad of paper and make a list of at least 100 goals that you want to accomplish in your lifetime. Then, imagine that you have all the time, all the money, or friends, all the abilities and all the resources necessary to achieve these goals. The amazing discovery you will make is that within 30 days after writing out this list of 100 dreams, remarkable things will begin to happen in your life. Ahead, the goals will start to be achieved at a rate you cannot even imagine today. Here's another goal setting question. If you want a million dollars tomorrow cash, it's free. How would you change your life? The primary reason that we stay in situations that are not the best for us is because we fear change. But when you imagine that you have all the money that you'll ever need, do or be whatever you want, your true goals often emerge. Here's another question to help you clarify your true goals. What have you always wanted to do, but been afraid to attempt? When you look around your world and you look at other people who are doing things that you admire, what have you always wanted to do as well, you've been afraid of taking the chance? Have you ever wanted to start your own business? Have you wanted to run for public office? Have you wanted to embark on a new career? What have you always wanted to do? Been afraid to attempt. In setting goals for your life long and short term, you should continually ask yourself, what do I most enjoy doing in each area of my life? For instance, if you could do just one thing all day long in your work, what would it be? If you could do any job or full-time activity all the time, now pay, what would it be? What sort of work or activity gives you the greatest joy and satisfaction? One of your aims in life is to enjoy as many peak experiences as possible. You achieve this by thinking back and identifying those moments of peak experience in your past, and then by imagining how you could repeat them in your present and future. What have been your happiest moments in life to now? How could you have more of those moments in the future? What do you really love to do? You should have goals for social and community involvement and contribution as well. Think about what kind of a difference you would like to make in your world. What organizations, causes, needs, or social problems would you like to work on or work in? What changes would you like to see in your world? Who is there who is less fortunate than you that you would like to help? If you were independently wealthy, what causes would you support? Most of all, what could you do today to begin making a difference in your world? Don't wait until some future day.
Everything will be ideal. Instead, start today in some way. One of the most important areas of goal setting is your financial life. If you could earn and accumulate all the money you need, you could probably achieve most of your non-financial goals faster and easier than you can today. If your life were ideal, how much money would you like to earn each month, year? How much would you like to save and invest each month and year? How much would you like to be worth sometime in the future? What sort of estate would you like to accumulate at the time you retire? And when would you like that to be? Most people are hopelessly confused about their financial goals, but when you become absolutely clear about them for yourself, your ability to achieve them increases dramatically. When you are absolutely clear about what you want, you can then think about your goals most of the time. The more you think about them, the faster they will materialize in your life. This process, asking yourself questions about your goals in each part of your life, begins to clarify your thinking and makes you a more focused and definite person. Now, here are three things you can do immediately to put these ideas into action. First, write down your three most important goals in life. Think now. Second, if you want a million dollars cash next free tomorrow, what changes in your life? You may immediately. Third, you can wave a magic wand over your life. Add anything you want to. What would you wish for? As Peter Drucker said, whenever you find something getting done, you find a monomaniac with a mission. The more you think about your major definite purpose, how to achieve it, the more you activate the law of attraction in your life. You begin to attract to you people, opportunities, ideas, and resources that help you to move more rapidly towards your goal and move your goal more rapidly towards you. When you have a major definite purpose, think of it, talk of it, work on it all the time, your outer world will reflect this like a mirror image. Any thought and our goal that you can clearly define your conscious mind will immediately start to be brought into reality by your subconscious mind and your superconscious mind as we will discuss later. Imagine that you decided that you wanted a red sports car. You write this down as a goal. You begin to think about and visualize a red sports car. This process sends the message to your reticular cortex that red sports car is now important to you. This picture immediately goes up onto your mental radar screen. From that moment onward, you will start to notice red sports cars wherever you go. You will even see them driving and turning corners several blocks away. You will see them parked in driveways and in showrooms. Everywhere you go, your world will seem to be full of red sports cars. If you decided to buy a motorcycle, you would start to see motorcycles everywhere. If you decided to buy it, you would begin to notice posters, advertisements, and television specials with information on Hawaiian vacations. Whatever goal message you send to your reticular cortex, Activate your reticular activating system. Make you alert to all possibility to make that goal reality. You will see stories in newspapers. Recognize books on the subject wherever you go. You will receive information and solicitations in the mail. You'll find yourself in conversations about earning and investing money. It will seem as though you are surrounded by ideas, information that can be helpful to you in achieving your financial goals. On the other hand, if you do not give clear instructions to your reticular cortex and your conscious mind, you will go through life as though you were driving in a fog. You will be largely unaware of all these opportunities and possibilities around you. You will seldom see them, notice them. Wherever your attention goes, your life goes as well. When you decide upon a major purpose, you increase your level of attentiveness and become increasingly sensitive to Anything in your environment can help you to achieve that goal faster. Your major definite purpose can be defined as the one goal that is the most important to you at the moment. It must have the following characteristics. First, your major definite purpose must be something that you personally really, really want. Your desire for this goal must be so intense 
The very idea of achieving your major definite purpose excites you and makes you happy. And the major definite purpose must be clear, specific. You must be able to define it in words. You must be able to write it down with such clarity that a child can read it and know exactly what it is you want and be able to determine whether or not you've achieved it. Third, your major definite purpose must be measurable and quantifiable. Rather than make a lot of money, it must be more like, I earn $100,000 per year by this day. Fourth, your major definite purpose must be both believable and achievable. Your major definite purpose cannot be so big or so ridiculous that it's completely unattainable at the moment. I made this mistake once myself when I was younger. I first started setting goals. Set an income goal that was ten times what I had ever earned in my life. After many months and no progress at all, I realized that my goal was not helping me because it was so far beyond anything I had ever achieved, yet had no motivating power. In my heart of hearts, although I wanted it, I really did not believe it was possible. And since I didn't believe it was possible, my subconscious mind rejected and my reticular cortex completely failed to function. Don't let this be you. Yes, your major definite purpose should have a reasonable probability of success, perhaps 50-50 when you begin. If you've never achieved a major goal before, Set a goal that has an 80% or even 90% probability. Make it easy on yourself, at least at the beginning. Later on, you can set huge goals with very small probabilities of success, and you'll still be motivated to take the steps necessary to achieve them. But in the beginning, set goals that are believable, achievable, and which have a high probability of success so that you can be assured of winning right from the start. Everyone wants to be a millionaire or a multimillionaire. The only question is whether or not you are willing to do all the things necessary and invest all the years required to achieve that financial goal. If you are, there is virtually nothing to stop you. Take out a sheet of paper and write down a list of 10 goals you would like to accomplish in the foreseeable future. Write them down in the present tense as though you had already achieved these goals. For example, you would write, I weigh 10 pounds, or I earn X number of dollars per year. After you've completed your list of 10 goals, back over the list and ask yourself this question. What one goal on this list, if I were to accomplish it immediately, would have the greatest positive impact in my life at the same time? Whatever goal you choose, write it on a separate sheet of paper. Write down everything you can think of that you can do to achieve this goal. And then take action on at least one item on your list. Write this goal on a 3x5 index card that you carry around with you and review it regularly. Think about this goal morning, noon, and night. Continually look for ways to achieve it. And the only question you ask is how. Your selection of a major definite purpose and your decision to concentrate Single-mindedly on that purpose, overcoming all obstacles and difficulties until it is achieved will do more to change your life for the better than any other decision you ever make. Whatever your major definite purpose, write it down and begin working on it today. Now, here are three things you can do immediately to put these ideas into action. First, answer the question, what one great thing would you dare to dream you knew you could not fail? Second, make a list of 10 goals you would like to achieve in the months and years ahead in the present tense. Select the one goal from that list that would have the greatest positive impact on your life. And third, make a list of everything that you can think of to do that will move you toward your goal. Take action on at least one thing, Jimmy Each person has one within his or her brain a special organ called a reticular cortex. This small figure, like part of the brain, functions in a way similar to a telephone switchboard in a large office building. Just as all phone calls are received by the central switchboard, 
and then reroute it to the appropriate recipient. All incoming information to your senses is routed through your reticular cortex to the relevant part of your brain or your awareness. Your reticular cortex contains your reticular activating system. When you send a goal message to your reticular cortex, it starts to make you intensely aware and alert to people, information and opportunities in your environment that will help you to achieve your goal. For example, imagine that you decided that you want a red sports car. You write this down as a goal and you begin to think about and visualize a red sports car. This process sends the message to your reticular cortex that a red sports car is now important to you. This picture immediately goes up onto your mental radar screen. From that moment onward, you will start to notice red sports cars wherever you go. You will even see them driving and turning corners several blocks away, parked in driveways and in showrooms everywhere you go. Your world will seem to be full of red sports cars. If you decided to buy a motorcycle, you would start to see motorcycles everywhere. If you decided to take a trip to Hawaii, you would begin to notice posters, advertisements, brochures, and television specials with information on Hawaiian vacations. Whatever goal message you send to your reticular cortex activates your reticular activating system to make you alert to all possibilities to make that goal a reality. If you decide to become financially independent, you will suddenly begin to notice all kinds of opportunities and possibilities around you that have to do with achieving your financial goals. You will see stories in newspapers and recognize books on the subject. Wherever you go, you will receive information and solicitations in the mail. You will find yourself in conversations about earning and investing money. It will seem as though you are surrounded by ideas and information that can be helpful to you in achieving your financial goals. On the other hand, if you do not give clear instructions to your reticular cortex and your subconscious mind, you will go through life as though you were driving in a fog. You will be largely unaware of all these opportunities and possibilities around you. You will seldom see them or notice them. It has been said that attention is the key to life. Wherever your attention goes, your life goes as well. When you decide upon a major definite purpose, you increase your level of attentiveness and become increasingly sensitive to anything in your environment that can help you achieve that goal faster. Your major definite purpose can be defined as the one goal that is the most important to you at the moment. It is usually the one goal that will help you achieve more of your other goals than anything else you can accomplish. It must have the following characteristics. One, it must be something that you personally really, really want. Your desire for this goal must be so intense that the very idea of achieving your major definite purpose excites you and makes you happy. Two, it must be clear and specific. You must be able to define it in words. And you must be able to write it down with such clarity that a child could read it and know exactly what it is that you want and be able to determine whether or not you have achieved it. 3. Your major definite purpose must be measurable and quantifiable. Rather than saying, make a lot of money, it must be more like, earn $100,000 per year by a specific date. It must be both believable and achievable. Your major definite purpose cannot be so big or so ridiculous that it is completely unattainable. For example, a woman approached me at one of my seminars and told me that she had decided upon her major definite purpose. I asked her what it was and she said, I am going to be a millionaire in one year. Curiously, I asked her approximately how much she was worth today. It turned out that she was broke. I asked her what kind of work she did and it turned out that she had just been fired from her job because of incompetence. I then asked her why she would set a goal to acquire a million dollars in one year under these circumstances. She informed me that I had said that you could set any major goal you wanted as long as you were clear. And she was therefore convinced that was all she needed to be successful. I had to explain to her that her goal was so unrealistic and unattainable in her current circumstances that it would only discourage her when she found herself so far away from it. Such a goal would actually end up demotivating her rather than motivating her to do the things she would need to be financially successful in the years ahead. A man on one of my seminars told me that his major definite purpose was world peace. 
I explained to him that unless he was the head of a major superpower, there was very little influence he could have on world peace. Such a goal would only keep him from setting a personal goal that was attainable, something he could work on every day. He was visibly irritated and walked away unhappy with my reluctance to encourage him in his fantasy. In both of these cases, they were using goal setting against themselves. They were setting themselves up for failure by creating goals that were so unachievable that they would soon become discouraged and quit making any efforts at all. This is a real danger when you begin setting big goals for yourself and you must be careful to avoid it. It can be a blind alley that leads you into discouragement and demotivation rather than success. I made this mistake myself when I was younger. When I first started setting goals, I set an income goal that was 10 times what I had ever earned in my life. After many months and no progress at all, I realized that my goal was not helping me because it was so far beyond anything that I had ever achieved. It had no motivating power. In my heart of hearts, although I wanted it, I really did not believe it was possible. And since I did not believe it was possible, my subconscious mind rejected it and my reticular cortex simply failed to function. Don't let this happen to you. Your major definite purpose should have a reasonable probability of success. Perhaps 50-50 when you begin. If you have never achieved a major goal before, set a goal that has an 80% or 90% probability of success. Make it easy on yourself, at least at the beginning. Later on, you can set huge goals with very small probabilities of success and you will still be motivated to take the steps necessary to achieve them. But in the beginning, set goals that are believable, achievable, and which have a high probability of success so that you can be assured of winning right from the start. Your major definite purpose must be in harmony with your other goals. You cannot want to be financially successful in your career on the one hand and play golf most of the time on the other. Your major goals must be in harmony with your minor goals and congruent with your values. Here's the key question for determining your major definite purpose. What one great thing would you dare to dream if you knew you could not fail? If you could be absolutely guaranteed of successfully achieving any goal, large or small, short term or long term, what one goal would it be? Whatever your answer to this question, if you can write it down, you can probably achieve it. From then on, the only question is how. The only real limit is how badly you want it and how long you are willing to work toward it. One of my seminar participants, a professor of chemistry at a leading university, had won a Nobel Prize in chemistry two years before in partnership with two other scientists. He told me that when he started his university career in his 20s, he decided that he wanted to make a major contribution in the field of chemistry. That was his major definite purpose. He focused on it for more than 25 years and eventually he was successful. He told me I was clear from the very beginning. I never doubted that I would eventually make such a significant contribution to chemistry that I would win the Nobel Prize. I was happy when it happened but it was not a surprise. Everyone wants to be a millionaire or a multimillionaire. The only question is whether or not you are willing to do all the things necessary and invest all the years required to achieve that financial goal. If you are, there is virtually nothing that can stop you. Here is an exercise for you. Take out a sheet of paper and write down a list of 10 goals you would like to accomplish in the foreseeable future. Write them in the present tense as though you had already achieved these goals. For example, you would write, I weigh triple X pounds or I earn triple X dollars per year. After you have completed your list of 10 goals, go back over the list and ask yourself this question. What one goal on this list, if I were to accomplish it immediately, would have the greatest positive impact on my life? In almost every case, this one goal is your major definite purpose. It is the one goal that can have the greatest impact on your life and on the achieving of most of your other goals at the same time. Whatever goal you choose, write it on a separate sheet of paper. Write down everything that you can think of that you can think of that you can do to achieve this goal and then take action on at least one item on your list.
Write this goal on a 3x5 index card that you carry around with you and review it regularly. Think about this goal morning, noon, and night. Continually look for ways to achieve it. And the only question you ask is how. Your selection of a major, definite purpose and your decision to concentrate single-mindedly on that purpose, overcoming all obstacles and difficulties until it is achieved, will do more to change your life for the better than any other decision you ever make.